Welcome. So what I want to do is I want to go back again with the compound interest, which we should know is A equals P times 1 plus R over N raised to the N times T. And kind of talk a little bit more about the compounding, because remember, A represents our final value. P represents our initial investment. Um, R represents our interest rate, our annual interest rate in decimal form. T represents the number of years. And R represents, or N represents how many times we're going to compound something per year, right? We're dealing with an annual interest rate and how many times we're going to compound per year. So there's a couple, uh, couple terms that you're going to read throughout your problems. And you might you know, question like, well, what exactly are they asking? You know, you got leap year here. You know, what exactly is this? So I want to go through each one of those terms so you'd understand at least what N is going to represent. So if I say you, know, you put some money into an uh, interest bearing account and it's going to be yearly, well, therefore, N is going to equal 1, all right? Then, sometimes they call it semi-annually, right? Annually, if they say, hey, it compounds annually, uh, that's the same thing as yearly, yearly or annually. All right, usually a lot of times you see yearly, but sometimes you hear semi-annually. Well, that means you're going to compound it twice in a year, all right? Um, so therefore, you go with semi-annually. And a lot of times, we have quarterly. So if I say, hey, you know, we're getting some interest bearing that's going to happen every quarter. Well, that quarter, think about a quarter, four quarters in a dollar. So therefore, quarterly would be n equals 4. Um, another one very, uh, very common that we look into would be monthly. Now, you just think about, well, if you're compounding something monthly per year, how many times is that per year? Well, since there's 12 months in the year, we could say n equals 12. Uh, sometimes they do because you know a lot of businesses, think about businesses, a lot of things happening bi-weekly. Well, just like semi-annually broke up a year into two, bi-weekly breaks up the number of weeks into two. So since there's 52 weeks in a year, bi-weekly, I can be able to do that. Bi-weekly is going to be half of 52, which would be 26. Then, of course, we could say, well, I can charge your interest weekly. So therefore, n would equal 52. Then if you go after, well, sometimes it's not even the every, of, uh, every week of the year, but sometimes even every day of the year. So we call that daily. And when we're dealing with daily, we're going to deal with 300. And 65. So you can see on each one of these cases that n keeps on getting bigger and bigger and bigger, right? Well, ladies and gentlemen, we're taking an interest rate, and what we've found out is, you know, if you now sometimes students are like, well, what happens if you actually and you know um, start doing it hourly or by the minute or by the second? Well, what we've come up with is because now we talk about continuous. All right. Because so what if now my graph is going to be continuously compounding, right? So you think about this. Well, this is going to keep on getting larger and larger and larger. Well, what this does is it approaches our, our value e. And e is going to be our constant. So when we're talking about continuously compounded interest, n is not going to equal a value for this formula. We actually are now, well, n, n, the value, we don't have the value of n, but our 1 plus r divided by n now approaches a constant. Um, which we're going to have r, well, not exactly this, but raised to the n, approaches our constant e. And we actually have to create a whole new formula, which we call, I like to call it PERT, but it's, now it's going to be your principal times our constant e raised to r times t. So it's very important that for all of these different types of problems, you can use the value of n. But if I ask you to start, start talking about something continuously, we have to now use a totally different equation, which is a equals p times e to the rt, where, again, a, p, r, and t are going to represent the same as, a, as, a, uh, as another compound interest. However, e is going to be your constant, which is in most, uh, most scientific calculators. Or obviously, you can look it up to find its approximate value. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That is a uh, short little synopsis on how compounding interest and the value of n. Thanks.